Hi, I'm Cameron, and today I'll be speaking to you about biomechanics in sports. Sports and science are often considered very different activities. In mainstream media, science users, also known as nerds, are really interested in or even good at sports. Science in its essence is the pursuit of understanding through observation, which begs the question, can we understand the human movement that is involved in sports and exercise through observation alone? And the answer is yes, with biomechanics. With biomechanics, we can help athletes prevent injury as well as improve performances. If we can understand the positions and the movements that result in injury, then we can help athletes avoid these particular positions. And if we can optimize the techniques used in a particular sporting event, then we can help athletes have greater success in their chosen field of play. But before we can achieve either of these two goals, we first need to establish what human movement is made up of. Human movement is comprised of motion and forces. Motion can either be linear, which is movement along a particular path, or angular, which is movement around a fixed point. However, when we move, it's often a combination of both linear and angular motion. If you were to jump forwards, your body would follow a particular path as you flow through the air. But various parts of your body would actually be rotating in order to maintain your balance while you were airborne. Whenever we want to generate movement, we first have to generate forces in our muscles that's going to propel us in certain directions. And when we include the equipment that's often used in sports, this adds another layer of complexity, as we now need to account for the forces of this equipment on the surrounding environment. So if we seek a way to observe and analyze human movement, we need methods that are, that are going to allow us to visualize and quantify motion and forces. And we're able to do this with a motion analysis lab. With a motion analysis lab, we can use high-tech cameras that can visualize a person in 3D space. Using these cameras, we can measure the angles and positions that a person moves through as they complete a specific task. If the motion analysis lab has force plates or a force treadmill, now we are able to get the ground reaction force of the individual as they complete the task. In this video, you see arrows shooting up off the ground. This is the ground reaction force of the individual as they complete the sprint. Sports and exercise are always evolving. Athletes and people are always striving for new and better ways to improve and get better in their specific sporting events. But nowhere is the effect of physics and biomechanics more evident than in the event of the high jump. Athletes used to use a variety of techniques to get over the bar, most popular of which was the straddle technique that you see here. It wasn't until 1968 that Richard Fosbury introduced his technique, the Fosbury flop, in which the athlete would actually go over the bar backwards. The genius of the Fosbury flop is not that the athlete would go over backwards, but the fact that as the athlete soared over the bar, their center of gravity actually passed below it. When trying to get over an obstacle, you usually have to translate your center of gravity to a point at or higher than the obstacle you're trying to get over. And this is the case for every other high jump technique except the Fosbury flop. Thus, by using the Fosbury flop, Richard Fosbury was actually using less energy than his, than his competitors, as he had to translate his center of gravity to a lower point. Using biomechanics, we can help athletes optimize the, the techniques used in their sporting events, like the Fosbury flop in the high jump. Or using biomechanics, we can analyze the training regimes or the equipment of athletes to help them have a greater success on their field of play. For these two reasons, biomechanics is a major player in sports and exercise.